morning, Hawaii folks. Hey, afternoon or evening, if you're on other time zones, welcome. Thanks so much for joining us at Think Tech Hawaii. The rule of law in the new abnormal, law and social justice, pretty much any topics that are timely and worth exploring. Hey, today we have the good fortune having with us Ben Davis, a retired law professor from University of Toledo School of Law, and now situated in Virginia, exploring his roots with some great stories about that. Hey. And David Larson, one of the leading professors at Mitchell Hamlin School of Law in St. Paul, Twin Cities, Minnesota. Hey, both David is and Ben was the chair of the American Bar Association section of dispute resolution, probably the largest single gathering of dispute resolution professionals in an organization in the world. Hey, and hey, from your experience leading people whose calling is conflict resolution, hey, any thoughts about what that might have to offer for the incredibly divisive even hostile conflicts that are basically shutting us down now and endangering us now. Yeah, you know, I, I like to say we're living in the era of, of amygdala hijack, where we are, you know, people are being driven emotionally, that the, that the temperature is raising, and people, you look at school board meetings repeatedly. People are um, attacking each other in school board meetings and school officials are getting threatened um, and their families are getting threatened. And if you could get people to just take a breath and step back and reflect on what you're doing and what you're saying, do, is this really how you wanna discuss this issue about masks in school? We could just take the temperature down um, and try and move people away from being so emotionally driven you know, with rage and anger and fear that um, I think that the people in our section uh, have a lifetime of experience in those kinds of circumstances on a smaller scale um, are constantly having to, to work with people to try and take the temperature down. And let's step back and think a little more rationally. And uh, you know, I know this is very emotional and, and there's reasons why that's true, but maybe we can help with that and maybe we can, we can calm things down. Yeah, I was, I, I was thinking, you know, one of the difficulties we run into is that um, how do people get into these rages? I think it's part of it is tied to efforts to trigger them, you know, to trigger them that uh, are ongoing um, to, to, to really engender fear, engender all those emotions, you know, tri tripping the amygdala, as I would say it. To, to get people in these states. And, and I, I, I can imagine some people, you know, when they look at themselves afterward, you know, they're kind of like, oh my goodness, what was that? You know, but why did I get to that, to such, such a point? Um, you know, I, I've hoped in some sense that something comparative might help. Um, for example, my wife just got back from visiting up in Quebec, Canada, right? And one of the things that really struck me when she talked about how it went there is that if you were to go into a shopping mall, right, you had to show your vaccine card at the door. Uh, obviously, you masked and you had to wash your hands with the hand sanitizer at the door. Then when you went inside, before you went into any store, you had to hand sanitize. It's just what you have to do. Uh, in addition, you have to, uh, there's a maximum of three separate family units can get together at any point in time. And um, I think if I, if, if, I, if I remember right, um, that, uh, you, you know, you're, you're basically uh, really required to be very compliant with very strict rules on things like 
what type of uh, test you can show to show that you uh, got a, a negative COVID. Um, there are certain tests that will be accepted, others that won't. Um, and if you play around, as happened to a couple of Americans who tried to play around trying to go across the border there, I think that they ended up getting fined something like 75,000 franc, uh, 75,000 Canadian dollars for kind of finagling, I guess, their, their vaccination cards or something like that, you know? And when I, you know, we don't think of Canadians as being sort of outrageously different from us, although the Canadians would say we are, they are very different from us. But the, the idea of that they're doing those kinds of things and that, you know, they have so many fewer total cases. Um, you know, I, you know I'm, I'm the kind of person who says that if that kind of actual facts were given to people, would that possibly help with people understanding that you know, this is really serious. I, I was very sad to hear recently about someone who I've known as a young gentleman, you know, who uh, I would have thought would have been vaccinated, but he wasn't, and he's got COVID now. And if it's this particular variant, I'm, you know, I'm worried that, you know, he'll be one of those 24, 30-year-olds who gets very sick and dies of it uh, when he could have just been vaccinated. I wanted to show. I have my booster that I got on Friday, you know, for, you know, one of the advantages of being 65 in this life, you know, um, and, uh, but, you know, I just, uh, the sense of relief from getting the second shot. And, and I, I know there are people who, who question whether this, the shot is, uh, is reasonable and, and question the science behind it and all that. And, you know, I can understand those kind of hesitations, but I do think that particularly when you see these children getting sick with it, how, you know, how you could live with yourself as a parent, having some philosophical reason for not getting the shot for yourself, but not thinking at least enough for your kids, you know, or to your grandparents or, or your parents, you know, just trying to protect them. You know, I, I don't know how you reach into that. Uh, um. You know, Ben, I like, I like the comparative approach. You know, one thing we can do is we can go cross-border and see what's going on in other countries, but we also can bring it home and say, let's do a comparative with your own life. Let's think back a couple of decades. You know, when we were doing polio vaccines and we were doing measles vaccines, how you didn't block at any of that. Um, you know, and let's kind of, let's, let's, let's go back in time a little bit. And why were you able to do that? And why were you so willing to do that? And there probably will be an understanding of, well, there was a public health need for that. And um, you know, I understood the urgency of measles, how dangerous that can be. And that we certainly don't want to get polio ourselves or spread it. And then it's like, oh yeah, I kind of understand now. So that, that idea of doing, comparing to other countries and saying, they've had much more success than we have by being a little stricter. And also just remember, how we were ourselves not that yeah. long ago. Yeah, and 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 you know all those uh, all those uh, inoculations uh, that uh, we've all been used to having for our kids to go to school. All those required inoculations that they had to have. I heard someone trying to distinguish the COVID vaccine with uh, those by saying, "Well, it's new." <laughs> you know, I'm like. Well, yes, it's new <laughs> because this thing is new. <laughs> and, yeah, thank God we don't have to have 10 years of people doing research to come to something that at least cuts off the high end. You know, that, that's the thing for me, the high risk part of it. Uh, but, you know, the, these efforts and, and mind games to distinguish this COVID vaccine from other ones, I think even there's the people who assert the Tuskegee case, right? Which, of course, you know, was about, and I saw somebody explain this the other night, it was totally eloquent. Is it, well, Tuskegee was about purposely infecting people and not giving them treatment and then watching what happened to them. Well, they, they got very sick and died. We're talking about actually being infected by a thing and coming up with a treatment 
to try to solve it. You know, it's like completely the opposite in a sense. Yeah, uh, you know, we've, got, yet, we've got so many inconsistencies. Um, people will say, I don't want to take a lab, a new lab created vaccine. But if it gets sick, give me the lab created monoclonal antibodies. It's like, well, well, yeah. Those, those are lab created too. So you right, won't take, right. you won't take something lab created to prevent the disease, but you'll take something lab created to, to treat the disease. And right. right there seems to be an uh, inconsistency. And, and you know, and I, I, I mean, there are people who uh, say there's some kind of uh, fetal tissue somewhere in the process of this being made, and that's their sort of relig religious objection. You know, um, yeah, you know. Yeah, you got a pope said, who says it's okay. Said you know? you, yeah, you know. some people have said there's fetal tissue in the vaccine, which is completely wrong. Um, no. You know, there's some, some very old fetal tissue that was used to, for, for growing some of the um, antiviral material. Um, but there's this sequence of events, and the, the age of that tissue is so far removed that you know, pro-life advocates who've been asked about this and to think about it critically have understood and kind of resigned to the fact that, no, this connection is not there. And literally, yeah. there's no fetal tissue in, in the vaccine. That just doesn't, doesn't exist. And another claim was there's, there's aluminum in it. In it. You, know, you don't want to put aluminum in your body. Well, you know, there are aluminum salts that, that help the vaccine operate. But those, that type of aluminum salt is in food. And we're, we're ingesting it all the time. And the, the, whatever amount is in the vaccine is so much lower than you get in your daily diet. And again, it's just irrelevant. Yeah. Well, it's interesting how these like little arguments. Uh, there was the uh, Nicki Minaj one about your, excuse me for saying it, your testicles getting bigger. You know, I mean, I was like, what kind of craziness is this? You know, I mean, uh, that, uh, but that it, you know, it, it sweeps through the social media and then people get freaked out by it. It's just these little things get built up. And I, I wonder. To what extent uh, that, well, there's two things. One is that getting followers, getting people to see you and getting people to listen to you can be lucrative, okay? And so there is, it, it kind of reminds you of the old stories about the people who are like sovereign citizens and writing books about you don't have to pay taxes and all that stuff and making money with those books. And then when you looked at them, they're, they filed their taxes perfectly on time with CPAs and all that to make sure that they didn't have a problem with the IRS. But they found that sort of an angle that works for them, right? You know, Except the thing here is that uh, the angle is one where, you know, how many 620, or near 675,000 people dead in the United States? Um, it's just. I don't know what 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 has to change, uh, but I I do hope uh, that uh, some of these videos of people who didn't get the shot, who are in the hospital and are asking to get the shot and are told it's too late, or even worse, the ones who say, once I'm over this, I will get the shot and they die, brings home the point that you know if you still have the possibility. Uh, and you, it's free, and get it, and uh, and uh, and 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 help yourself survive, and help those around you survive. You know? Yeah, you know, we've got a, we've got a, a vaccine adverse effects uh, reporting system. That's a that's a real thing. Uh, but problem with that site is that anybody can report. Nothing's verified. Um, so you, anybody can put anything on there. And the problem yeah. is that people then go to that site and then say, look, uh, look at. What, what's happened to people from the vaccine and people put outlandish things on there. And then that okay. gets reported you know, as data from this reporting site. And it's never yeah. false that it's an unverified, you know, unverified site. And that, that becomes viral. And, uh, and then people think, oh, I'm not going to get the vaccine because I might get, for example, swollen testicles or who knows what else. Right, right. Or my, my toes are going to grow or something. I don't know. But, you know, like, for example, I got this, this shot on Friday, so I get a, I'm in a system, was called VSafe, where they ask me every day, how's it going, you know? So th there's a choice for me, which is, 
I can play around, right? And say, you know, my ears are turning green, my nose is, has grown four times. I mean, I can write anything I want, right? Okay. Yeah. But then it's like a question of sort of personal responsibility. I mean, as a person who's going to provide data that would hopefully be of assistance to what's going on, try to honestly respond to what happened and hope that each of us individually through our collective action ends up providing meaningful information, particularly for people who are uh, having adverse reactions, if they are, you know, so that those are the folks who get called first to say, how are you doing? As opposed to calling me, I'd say my nose is growing. And they would say, sir, your nose is growing? You know, somebody takes the time and I'm like, ah, I was just joking around. You know what I mean? It just, it's just the kind of a little minimal level of sort of civic responsibility, if I could say it like that, um, in both getting the shot and in both the, the, the follow-up. Uh, I understand snarkiness. I understand all of those kinds of things. But, you know, when you hear about these cities and towns and places that are spending money on creating, uh, getting, you know, uh, trailer trucks to put the bodies in. Uh, there's another thing. I just saw that one of the governors has got some COVID money and they're going to build prisons with it. You know, I'm like, seriously, I mean, this COVID money was not for building prisons. It was for COVID stuff, you know. Arizona, the Arizona governor is taking that money and giving $7,000 to families to take their children out of public schools that require masks to pay for them to go to private schools that don't require masks. So you know, I, here's $7,000 I mean, for that. You know, I, I mean, I, 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 you know, I understand that, hey, look, let's throw some money. And so we want to subsidize private schools and, you know, the whole sort of anti-public school thing that goes on out there in the world, right? I understand that kind of instrumentalization, okay? Uh, but, you know, what are we talking about? Putting them in schools where they don't have to wear masks. And what happened is that the kids get exposed and they get quarantined for two weeks right away after the first day of school. I just saw uh, something happen in Harvard Business School. Harvard Business School has gone completely remote because, and you would think that people who went to Harvard Business School would sort of have a certain level of understanding of things, but you know, they have an outbreak in Harvard Business School, you know, and it's like, what do you think is going to happen uh, if 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 you play around with masks or you, you play around with not getting vaccinated? People are going to get sick. Uh, you know, we we ask our healthcare professionals to do a lot, and right now, um, and depending on location, they are so overwhelmed. But something else we have really have to ask them to do is, in light of all this misinformation. How do we get people to believe accurate information? It's got to come from a reliable source. So if it's just a TV commentator who's barking back at you know, a Fox News person that's saying the other thing, nothing I think really sticks with that. But if, you're, if your personal physician has the time to talk with you, even for a short period of time, about the vaccine, somebody that you've learned to trust over the years, who's yeah. taking care of you, I mean, that might be a really effective way to deliver a message. But, you know, Having said that, we are asking our healthcare professionals to do so much now, and um, we're in this, again, this crazy situation where some healthcare professionals are resigning in the face of mask mandates, which it, to me is just, I really can't understand that. People who understand, who have been trained in healthcare and understand public healthcare won't take the vaccine, even though they want to treat people that are vulnerable to getting the vaccine getting the, the infection. So, um, but if we can get the, the healthcare professionals that have worked with individuals over a period of time and gain their trust, communicate the fact that this is not something we have to worry about, something for everyone's good and your own good, and that, that one might be an effective way to deliver the message. I hope so, because uh, I certainly remember taking the salt vaccine as a little kid, and there were there was literally no issue. There was like a notice that was must have been given to each kid in school that we had to take home, which said that you have to show up at X elementary school at this time on this day and take this vaccine. And we all went and we all did it. And it was a new vaccine at the time, if I remember right. And uh, but it was considered the miracle, you know, that would 
help to avoid uh, such debilitating diseases, you know, and I, I don't know, uh, obviously we don't have the coherence of voice in terms of the only three news channels. Um, uh, we don't have the kind of coherence of the federal and state governments that you had in the public health authorities. I think there's probably a, a, a logic between them that was pretty uniform or sort of everybody was on the same team pretty much. Um, uh, and so now it, it, everything has got, you know, a, a left, right or Democrat, Republican vision to it. But it's unfortunate that uh, we, we, you know, we, we can't see past those things. Um, to what I think is what is essential is that are you, are we making a, a ground for the vac for the virus to propagate itself or are we not? I mean, because every game we play that is not attacking it, the virus must love. You know, I mean, I'm maybe anthropomorphizing it a little, but you know, the virus is like I'm looking for an angle. You know, I hit, where's my angle here? Okay, that's your thing. Great, leave that here. Have a little bit of me. <laughs> I, I think the virus has a social media site. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I think I think the virus is putting out a lot of this information. That's right. The virus. No, no, don't take that vaccine, please. Don't do that. Right. <laughs> There's millions of followers. <laughs> so, so you folks have done just a marvelous, marvelous job of connecting the dots between the politicization of things that before this were always public health is public health, right? Education's education. It, they were managed in ways that serve particular elite groups, particularly groups that have been identified as white dominant, white male dominant, white supremacist, however you want to call it. But how do we move the needle away from this politicization that people are identifying with as if this is my politics, this is who I am, this is what I believe in, therefore this is my position. How do we disconnect that? And one thing is just you draw it as clearly as possible, kind of the connection, again, to, to kind of I talked about earlier about taking the temperature down, but, but making it more clear that that what's happening here you I mean, take a step back and and think about what you're saying and what intellectually you 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 know is true and what you how you've been behaving and what you've been saying and how you acted at the school board meeting when you when you threatened the principal um uh is that really the person you want to be um uh, to, to to try and try and separate the the emotion from the from the from the rational thinking, and you know, I think it's a drumbeat that just has to be repeated. That re remind yourselves what's happening here. Look around, what's happening? Is this the America you want to live in? Um, look yeah. at these videos of these school battles. Is this where you want your kids going to school? Is this is you want your kid watching you behaving like this? Um, is this the role model you want to be? Um, yeah. Just trying to kind of. I mean, I really think it's 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 as distressing and kind of disappointed as it seems to be, and maybe as impossible as it sometimes seems to be. But to not give up the idea that um, try to get people to to be more rational, try to get them to recognize that they're being manipulated to some degree. I, you know, this may be conspiracy theory, but I I just see Vladimir Putin sitting back and just laughing at you know, yeah. 15 years ago, he said, you know, I know the way to destroy democracy, you know, I, I, you know, to polarize it, to break the community, to get to break the idea that we're all in this together. And, you know, if I can, if I, and the way I can do that is to inflame people, you know, and get them, get them afraid, get them angry, um, the, the rawest kinds of emotions. So let's start building websites on every social media platform with every kind of disguise possible. And let's start sending out kinds of material that we know is going to generate that kind of response and and that's we know that's happened uh and i just think 
He's sitting back there having a vodka and saying, yeah. I did it. So I, I did it. Yeah. So, uh, one thought that came to mind uh, was, you know, like when people buy things, there can be an emotional aspect to them, buying a card, all that. And I was thinking back to a book called The Secret of Closing Sales, right? Which was like the different approaches to closing people or getting a sale on a car or something. So on the vaccine, you know, one of the was the little questions approach, which is, you know, so um, would you prefer a large ICU room or a small ICU room? <laughs> you know, would you prefer a in, in, intubated in pink or blue? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, and then get, get people like saying, my God, I don't want any of that. Well, we have the vaccine and yellow and blue pens. Which per, would you prefer? I'll take the blue pen. Okay, great. We have vaccines in your, you know, your school color uh, needle or something like that. And then the other one that is like apparently effective too. It's it, there's a song called "Walk the Moon Has Shut Up and Dance with Me," which is like you know, yeah. They say everything you say. They say yeah, shut up and get the shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's all. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. Shut up and get the shot. Boom. You know, <laughs> with. <laughs> I, which I, I've said that at, at these little clinical things, trying to get people informed. And you should see the people behind the desk. They love to say it. They would really love to say it. But, you know, they have to stay in this sort of format, you know. Well, we're big sports fans. I like that idea of, um, you know, support your school, support your NFL team. You know, get the yeah. shot, get the bear yeah, shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Viking yeah. yeah. needles, you know what I mean? Right. You know, or whatever. Yeah. You know, I mean, just... It, 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 I don't know what, if it's even feasible, but you know that idea of just, uh, making it sort of part of your stuff, you know, of being who you are. We talk identity, right? Well, identity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we're talking about how the sense of community was being destroyed, and maybe that's a way to create a more of a mini community. Yeah, yeah, you know, maybe that's maybe that's one possible solution to say, okay, maybe we can't. It's getting really hard to identify a. A national identity to which everybody believes they, they they belong, but there are a lot of smaller circles that are still pretty significant in terms of numbers. And maybe if we pitch to those groups, um, that might be one way. Yeah, yeah. You know the I don't. I'm trying to think of the 49ers. You know the a 49ers. Uh, and the other thing is, of course, you know I have my little booster thing here. You know, like little necklaces and little rings and then the little things around, you know, all that I boosted, whatever, you know, all that marketing stuff that if it was turned towards this, maybe would be part of what we'd have to do. I mean, there's a lot of effort that's going into marketing already, but it's just like maybe there's some of that, all that stuff that we get when we see a Ford commercial or something like that, that would be part of this, you know, virile person getting a shot or something like that, the beautiful lady getting a shot or something. I don't know. I don't know. I just think, especially young people, you know. Yeah, I do. I do think it is important to, 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 to not let the misinformation lie, to, to call it out. Um, and I think that that's, that's important when you become aware of things that are being said about Needle tissue being in vaccines, which is not true, about yeah. the risk of getting aluminum poisoning from a vaccine, which isn't true. But don't let those things lie, uh, to call them out and, and expose them and to address them. Yeah, you've I was thinking. Given us, and I apologize, we're out of time for today, yeah. but you've given us a lot to think about and kind of brought us back around full circle to the center of this being. Who do we want to see ourselves as? Who do we really want to be? What kind of attitudes and behaviors do we really model, want to model? And can we do that for the benefit of others, even if it may raise some questions? Lots to think about. We'll be back in two weeks. Folks, come join us again. Send us your questions. Send us your thoughts. Think Tech Hawaii. And thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.